the word of God is the wisdom of God when you expose yourself to the word of God your faith will grow and increase the word of God brings stability into our lives because it does not change so what God says we can depend on it it doesn't change and so we renew our minds to think the way God wants us to think my thoughts are renewed in line with the word of God I see through the eyes of the world where the knowledge of the word of God is there faith is there the word informs our actions spiritually we should not be ignorant the Bible says that we are not ignorant of his devices who is he talking to those who are informed we ought not to be ignorant of the Word of God because the Word of God is the basis of um, we've been looking at the parable of the sower from Luke chapter 8 and we're looking at the nature of the seed we said something that the seed we had said established that the seed is the word of god amen the seed is the word of god and everything that is sown in this world starts with the word of god everything we see in this world came through the word just in case you are wondering uh, where did we get that from? Hebrews chapter 11. It says, through faith we understand, verse 3, that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made out of things which do appear. Praise the Lord. So that's where we got that from. Now, today we're going to be talking about the fact that the word of God is spirit and life. And the word of God is a living thing. The Word of God is living and powerful. In John chapter 6, verse 63, can we have that up there? Jesus said, it is the spirit that quickened. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Amen. All right, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. It says, for the Word of God is quick and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, going into the dividing asunder of, the, of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a designer of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. I studied on this, and um, it's, it's vital that we know um, what he's talking about here. There are two words there that I want us to pay close attention to, and which is that the word of God is quick and it is powerful. Hallelujah. Quick just means zeo. And that is Z-A-O in the Greek. It means to leave. It means it possesses or to be possessed of vitality or to exercise the function of life. It has life in it. It's living. Uh, it has means of subsistence. It means um, to, be, to, to be with life and vigor. It's active. Hallelujah. It's living. And the kind of life this has is peculiar to God himself. The kind of quick, quick it's talking about here is peculiar to God. And it's is constant. It's also living water and it has feelings. That's the part that got me. It said it, it's, it's, it's alive with cheered and hopeful feelings. The next word, so when he says the word of God is quick, it means it's alive, it's full of vitality. It exercises, it's living, it's subsistent. It also passes existence in a specific manner. So it works in a particular way. And it's peculiar to God. The other word that I wanted us to pay close attention to is the word powerful. It means it's the word that you get energy from. Hallelujah. It refers to energy engaged in work it has 
ability to do things, is active, is powerful, is effective. Hallelujah. It also has um, healing or it has a, 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 a healing influence as medicine. So it is medicine to the body. Medicine to a situation where somebody's ill. The word of God are all these things. It's efficient, it is effective, it's active, it's powerful, it's effectual, it's strong and mighty. Hallelujah. So when we hear the word of God is quick and powerful, it means it's living and it's energetic, it's active, it's powerful, it's effectual, it's effective. There is something that I, I was talking about prior and I said that there are two words that I originally knew that power to be in the Greek, when power is used, uh, there were two that I was aware of. I was aware of dunamis, I was aware of um, exousia, but this word iskos, strong and mighty, I was not aware of. And that is what the word of God is. A strong and it is mighty by itself. Hallelujah. Why is this important? Because when you're speaking the word of God, it's important for you to have an understanding that what you're releasing is a spiritual force. When we speak the word of God, we are releasing a spiritual force. Even if it looks like it's not working, it is working. Because there's a realm in which it is creating problems, as it were. All right, there was a time where there was a tsunami uh, somewhere in the Far East, one of these nations. The very first, you know, what I mean, it's in recent history, popular ones. It was said that before the tsunami came, all the animals had gone to the highlands. They found out that all the animals started running, you know. Now, they, they were hearing something that the human ears could not hear until he wiped them out. But the animals were saved. That is how the word of God is. There was a mighty force coming, but the human ears could not hear it, nor the eyes see it, but it had such power that it could destroy mankind, as it were, in that area. So is the word of God. When we're speaking it, in the realm of the invisible, it's a force. It is having great impact. But in our realm, until we see it here, it appears not to have power. It appears not to be doing anything. As long as that word is authorized to be spoken here by God, and it speak, is being spoken by someone in authority, or rightly, somebody who has delegated authority, like we do. If you're a believer, you have a right to use the rema of God. You have a right to use the logos of God. Logos of God is intelligent conversation that we derive from the written text. Hallelujah. That's reasoning from the word of God. The written pages. Those things that are written on the pages of the Bible are the logos of God. Now when we take in the word of God and meditate upon it and understanding comes, revelation comes, then the spirit of God inspires us to speak the word. That is the rhema of God. The rhema of God is quick and powerful. We declare understanding of the word of God. Somebody says, the Bible tells us that for ye know the grace. Let's, let's look at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. He said, for ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes 
he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. So God gave us his word for us to have benefit, to benefit from all that he has done. Because he's not in a realm that we can see him, so he gave us his word. Hallelujah. He gave us his word. His word is sure. Glory be to God. His word never changes. So we're looking at the nature of the word of God. Does God say things and then change his mind? Hallelujah. He does not change his mind. If God says to you, I have given you a million dollars, God does not change his mind. Except you don't line up with what he said. Praise the Lord Jesus. Glory be to God. He said in his word, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. And all things are become new, and all things are of God. That includes your any ancestral curses, generational curses pass away. All things become new, and all things are of God. So when I, I get born again, my old life passes away because a new creature has come in. This new creature has never existed before in the realm of the spirit. So we said that the word of God has the nature of God. The word of God has the life of God. The word of God is God. In John chapter 1, and verse 1, we read about all of that. We talked about that the last time. Where the word of God is present, God is present, and the power of God is present. The Bible says, where the word of a king is, there is power. John chapter 1 verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. This is before the word was made manifest and dwelt among us. That word was in God. Jesus is the sum of the spoken word of God. Now, how that is possible only God can do that. He is born of his spoken word. We who are born again, we also born of God's word. Hallelujah. So we said number two is that God's word, he said the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. It's a spiritual force and it has life in it. The remnant that I speak to you, Jesus said, they are spirit and they are life. When we speak the word of God rightly, with God's approval, it has power. What do I mean God's approval? We glean God's approval from his word. The Bible tells us something in the book of 1 John chapter 5 concerning prayer. The principle of prayer applies in every situation that the things of God are concerned. This principle of prayer. He said in verse 14, it says, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. So it means if it lines up, if it has God's approval, we can ask. And we cannot be guessing the things that God approves of. If it was, it means that every prayer would be, oh Lord, if it be your will for me to be well, let me be well. For we know from God's word that it's too late for it to become, oh God, if you're willing, let me be healed. No. With his tribes, we are healed. We were healed. Amen? It's in the past. Glory be to Jesus. It's in the past. It's past tense. With his tribes, we were healed. 
In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, the Bible says, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. Our sins have been paid for. That we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. Amen? Did he say by whose stripes you will be healed? No, he says you were healed. Now, when Jesus was taking those stripes that he was being beaten, it was payment for you and I's illness that we will definitely recover. If anything goes wrong, you have to believe as a child of God that you will recover. Now, he says, but pastor, what if he's an old person? I'm not old and all of that. You don't have to be sick to die. The Lord will tell you, as he tells his servants, everything he wants to do before he does it. When you're about to go, you will know. You should know. Let me use a word that you will relate with. You should know that it's time. If you go through the scriptures, all the righteous men that are in the Bible, God always revealed to them when it was time for them to go. And they knew. They knew their assignment here was over. They were ready to go. Hallelujah. That is how someone who is godly and a righteous person ought to go. You shouldn't just say, oh, I just died. No, you shouldn't just die. <laughs> Except you have the right mindset, the devil is going to take advantage of anyone's ignorance. Assuming you don't know what belongs to you, he will steal from you because he's the thief. The Bible tells us, God said in his word, my people perish for the lack of knowledge. So what you do not know about, the devil can have you in that area because he's a thief. Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He said, but I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Now, there's a reason why, especially in America, we talk a lot about the liberties we enjoy as Americans, right? Okay. Now, if you don't know your right as an American, you can be abused. Hallelujah. You can have people come and actually mess with you. But when you know your rights, nobody messes with you. Ignorant people, people mess around with them. Is that not true? Spiritually, we should not be ignorant. The Bible says that we are not ignorant of his devices. Who is he talking to? Those who are informed. We ought not to be ignorant of the word of God. Because the word of God is the basis of judgment in the universe. It is the rule of operation in the universe. Because God is the king of the universe. Everything that the eyes see when you get out of the earth and the things the eyes cannot see, God created it all. But our eyes are fixed on the word. It's important. Everything God is going to do through the life of man and the earth, God has already revealed in his word. What he's not going to do is also revealed. Let us say, Jesus said, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's John chapter 10, verse 10. It says, but it says, I am come that they might have life, Zoe, the life of God, the quality of life that God lives, the kind of life that God lives, and that they might have it more abundantly 
So when there is stealing, there is killing, and there is destruction contrary to the word of God, the devil is responsible. Which means if you went to the ATM to cash some money and somebody walked up to you and took your money from you at gunpoint, God did not do that. God is not trying to teach you anything. The devil did that. If a woman got abused or raped as a child, God did not do that. The devil did that. If you find yourself losing money, marriage is not working out, people are fighting all the time. The husband and the wife are fighting all the time. Now, I'm talking about a legitimate marriage now. The devil is responsible. If you're shacking up and you're fighting all the time, you're in an, on, you're in a, in a, an unlawful ground and the enemy has a right to bushwhack your marriage, to destroy your marriage, if you like, to, to ambush you and destroy what you, what you got because it is not ordained of God. Hallelujah. The word of God tells us what legitimate ground is, what right ground is, what wrong ground is. Amen. By the nature of the word of God. Hallelujah. He says that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. And this word power here is not authority to say. It is actually the I want to give you an opportunity at this time to receive Jesus as Lord of your life. The Bible says that what would it profit a man if he would gain the whole world and lose his own soul? So at this time, I want us to pray a simple prayer that would bring Jesus into your life. Give God the legal right to come into your life and make you his child. And so let us pray. And I want you to mean it with all your heart. Don't be distracted at this time because this is the most important decision you're ever going to make in life. And so let us pray. So Almighty God, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I confess that I'm a sinner in need of salvation. Forgive me of all my sins. I believe that Jesus died for me and that you raised him from the dead. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord and personal Savior from this day forward and forever. In Jesus' name. Now, if you pray that prayer and mend it with all your heart, you become a child of God. You give given God the legal right to come in and recreate your human spirit and make you a new creature. Now that you have done that, you need to take these steps of faith. The first one is that you need to buy yourself a Bible. Buy a Bible from one of the stores. Don't be going for free things. Buy one. That's your step of faith. Then read it. Read the New Testament portion of the Bible first. After that, read the old in the context of the new. Secondly, you need to join a church. Uh, look for a Bible-believing church where people also believe. When we say Bible-believing, it means it believes in the doctrine of the Bible and believe in divine healing, that Jesus is still alive today and he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, that they have baptism of the Holy Spirit, uh, they, they're speaking with other tongues. These things need to be there. Thirdly, you need to testify. You need to tell about two or three people that you have just given your life to Jesus. Finally, pray, talk to God in prayer every day. Talk to him wherever you are, whatever is going on in your life, whatever the need may be, talk to him and be thankful to him for saving you. 
these things, when you do them, you're going to set your Christian life on the path of success that it needs to be on. Uh, if you were blessed by a broadcast, I want you to do something like our page and follow it. And on YouTube, we want you to subscribe. And also, on every platform you are, hit the notification button so whenever our services come on or we post anything, it will come to you first. And also, if you are interested in growing in your knowledge of the Bible and of your faith in Christ Jesus, this is the place to be. Come fellowship with us. Join us at the Blessed House International Church in Lake Mary, this beautiful city of lakes, Lake Mary, Florida. I look forward to seeing you. Come join us and your life will never be the same in Jesus' name.